Well, I'll, I'll be honest. I admit whatever thing I did say on there. I, uh, I'm, I'm a person. I don't like being in, getting in any any trouble because. Well, how could you expect not to get into trouble? Have you ever seen our stories on computer predators, adults who go online? No. Thomas, this is one of those stories, and I'm Chris Hansen. What's good, YouTube? Welcome back to Grim. Another day, another classic TCAP reaction for you. This time, we are going uh. to the Wild West, where Chris Hansen is going to completely decimate this cowboy predator. That's right, this dude pulls up in a full Red Dead Redemption looking outfit, and I have got to say, this episode is wonderful. So make sure you watch until the very end and react to this one with me. I had a ton of fun watching this one. As always, leave a like and a comment to help boost me in the algorithm. It means a ton, and maybe check out my Twitch if you want to catch me more often have a lot of fun streaming over there anyways let's get right on into it shall we oh my god he's out of the vehicle what is walking. he carrying we we're trying to figure out what thomas coffin had in the case of thomas coffin it was nothing made the turn knock on the back door all right, so our mark today, Thomas is walking up to the house, and I gotta say, we just got a tiny little snippet of his vehicle, but can you tell me a more perfect creep mobile for these guys to be pulling up in? I know we've seen some bummy rides, but this dude literally has the, you know, free candy van, perfect example that he's pulling up in. This thing has no side windows, just a big innocuous white van, and he's literally coming to this house to do this, to meet this decoy. It could not be more perfect. Now let's watch his world fall apart, shall we? Huh? Come on in, I'm in here. I made you some chocolate chip cookies and they're on the table. I'm just getting changed. I got some chocolate on my shirt. He's in the kitchen. Come in the living room and take a seat. I'm right here standing. Oh, the classic chocolate chip cookie ruse. You know, they have like one or two different excuses that they use. It's either laundry or cookies. But all I know is that these decoys are the most accident prone people I have ever seen. Nevertheless, the man's in the house and it looks like we're about to get the reveal. So let's keep moving on here for the best freaking part. When these guys realize they're not actually meeting the person they thought they were talking to. Instead, it's 40 something year old Chris Hansen that's going to hand them a butt whooping. Well, verbally, of course, he doesn't actually beat them up. Although I would watch that show. I know you guys would too. That would be absolute cinematic gold. And it might even overtake, you know, the whole talking side of this show. I think we need a Hanson versus Predator boxing series stat. I dubs, get on it. He's looking nervous, Rob. Have your guys ready. Hey, how are you? Why don't you have a seat on that uh, stool for me there? What's up? Looking for work and stuff. Looking for work and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and this is a first I've ever heard this excuse. The guy walks into the house, sees Chris Hansen, and his excuse that comes out of his mouth is, I'm looking for work, which is, you know, an average thing. Usually when you're out looking for work, it can be hard in the job market, and you really do have to walk around, sometimes entering random people's houses, speaking to their children while they're away at work, you know, wondering how they're doing, how they're making their cookies and everything. It is a part of the process that all of us have to deal with when getting a job. Sarcasm, of course, but for real, this guy has one of the dumbest excuses I have ever heard heard and it's kind of ironic he's talking about work because as soon as you appear on this show and as soon as your face is plastered across the screen broadcast to millions of homes watching this live as this was happening back in the early 2000s your chances and prospects of having a job pretty much drastically drop down after this of course he's going to be serving some jail time but i mean even after that he is not going to be hireable at many places so yeah he will be on a job hunt but that is not what he's doing right now yo guys real quick i know this is insane but i just want to give a shout out to my patreon we're doing some special events along with the bonus content which includes face cam that I'm posting over there weekly. But this Friday, we're doing our first Patreon only live stream with TCAP Bingo. That's right. We are going to be playing bingo. You guys can play live with me with customized bingo cards. It's going to be a great time. So if you want to check that out, link is down in the description and the pinned comment. Anyways, let's get back on into the video, shall we? Coffin story didn't make a lot of sense. Now, do you want to start the story again? What do you mean? Tell the truth. That was a lot. Sorry about that. Why did you lie, Thomas? I um, <laughs> okay. Oh my God. That was some pure savagery from Chris there. I love that. He's just like, you want to try again? That was a lie. Like what an alpha. No, that was a Sigma male move. All right. Isn't that what the hierarchy is? Sigma's above alpha. I can't keep track of what these guys on the internet, these lonely dudes are ranking this, but whatever is the highest tier that is Chris. Okay. He's a Christmas male. That is what the new term is. It is the overarching final boss of males out there. That is Chris. And he's just little bro in this guy over here. This guy, you can see he's already starting to sweat. He's gulping this red dead red redemption looking outfit that he's wearing which i'm surprised i have not commented on yet is just not working out for him look dude you look very cool without the sleeves you look very tough right all right walker texas ranger vibes with the hat and everything but it's just not going to help you out in this case now come up with a better story before we take you away in handcuffs i just don't like being in being in, in trouble you know i talk to a lot of people and I, I meet a lot of people 
Come to find out, Thomas Coffin had done this before. Oh, so they've gotten this guy a couple times, but this is the first time he's actually gone through with meeting up with the decoy. So yes, he is a repeat offender, does not look good for him. And if he even tries to use that excuse of, oh, this is my first time, they at least have evidence to show him, no, it is not. Which obviously no guy that has ever said this on this show, except for maybe a couple I could believe have, uh, you know, actually done this for their first time. But also, did you hear what he said there? He's like, I'm a guy that doesn't like getting in trouble. Isn't that the most obvious freaking statement you could make? I mean, how many of us out there would say, oh, I love getting in trouble. I love facing consequences of my actions. Like, no, dude, that is like saying I enjoy breathing. Obviously, every freaking human being out there enjoys not getting in trouble, dumbass. This dude is just wowing me with his stupidity so far, and I am loving it. I am into young girls. I like them better than older girls. Younger, you know, like 19, 20. That's what I meant by that. What I meant by that was, you know, people right on the cusp of legality, okay? At least 1920. You know, I'm not really into much younger than that, even though the decoy did explicitly tell me multiple times that they are quite a few years younger than 19. But, you know, despite that, I just like to keep them young but legal, of course. Like, all right, dude, what's, what's the next stupid lie going to be? You're like 0 for 3 so far. I mean, if this was baseball, you would be out. But you know what? We're going to let you keep going because watching these idiots crash and burn is the best part of this show. What was the biggest blank you have had? Well, I'll, I'll be honest, I admit with everything I did say on there, I, it, I, I'm a person, I don't like being in, getting in any, any trouble because, what? <laughs> okay, dude, <laughs> this dude's gonna give me a full-on freaking heart attack from how stupid he's being. He doubles down on one of his dumbest lies so far, or not even lies, just statements of, I don't like to get in trouble. Is that your only answer here, dude? Chris is reading some very vile messages that show very clearly your intentions and why you were speaking to this person. I mean, the amount of blanks we just had to censor here is astronomical. And then he's following it up with, you know, well, I... I, uh, eh, I, I really don't like getting in trouble. Like, oh, Chris is just gonna turn around and be like, hey, cops, no, let's not, let's not take this guy away in handcuffs. Look, he did the crime for sure, but he doesn't like getting in trouble. And we like to cater to these guys who are breaking into somebody's house while they're away, while they think only their child is home. And had we not been here, something very bad was about to go down. But you know what? Even though all of it was illegal that he's been doing today, we're just gonna let him go off scot-free because he simply doesn't like getting in trouble. How could you expect not she to get in trouble? She PM, PM me a couple of times. I can... I can show you and stuff. Who approached whom first? I clicked on the name, you know, I, I say hi. And right. So you started the conversation. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He's got a vanishing hat and also a vanishing hairline here. Wow. We got a magician on our hands. Not only is he the next star of Red Dead Redemption 3, he's also a freaking street slate of hand master. All right. We need to get this guy on pen and tell her fool us or something, dude. But for real, I love how Chris is not easing up. If anything, he's being more aggressive with this guy. And I find with people like this that are very cognizant of their surroundings, you can tell this dude is a normal guy of normal average intelligence. Even though his answers are stupid, you can tell he's not like, you know, facing any sort of mental discrepancies, so to say. So when Chris sees that and he sees that they are just lying through their teeth, he really is aggressive with these guys. And I love that. Sometimes he goes a little bit soft for my liking, but again, you got to think of what these guys are here for. Of course, if you caught them yourself, you would be absolutely going mental with their questioning. If anything, I'd be screaming and throwing hands at this dude. So I'm glad that Chris is still showing restraint while also just tearing into this guy with relentless questions, kind of just poking holes in every single one of his stories. I just talk and you know, not to, not to make anything bad. You know, I just, I just, I talk to a lot, a lot of people and stuff, and um, I got a cousin that usually goes on the computer and types up stuff underneath my name too. Oh my God. And it's just lies after lies. So first thing is he talks to a lot of people. You know, sometimes you just got to go to a chat room, see every single username and message them. Hey, can you send me photos of somewhere, you know, that you usually don't show online? Thanks. Also, I'm not going to worry about checking your age, even though you already told it to me. And I told you that I enjoy people of your age, despite, you know, the fact that it's illegal. You know what? I do talk to a lot of people, so you can't hold that against me. All right. I'm just requesting pictures from everybody on AOL Instant Messenger. And then he also pairs that with another one of my cousins sometimes types it. Dude, if that isn't the most middle school excuse, have you guys ever fumbled the bag and you for some reason just send a text to somebody like your crush back in middle school or something where you profess your feelings to them or it's just super cringy and they reject you and then you pull the, oh God, sorry, my friend had my phone. That is literally the oldest gag in the book. I remember doing that on my Razor flip phone when I was trying to mac on girls back in elementary school. Maybe I was wrong about this guy not having any mental deficiencies. I feel he has a IQ that is in the single digits at this point. Like I'm surprised he's even able to speak English. I, I always carry him on me. Why you put them on the table? There, I always have them. You always carry them right here in your yeah. breast pocket. But for easy access? No. 
Oh, and the guy brought balloons. You guys know what I'm saying when I mention balloons. You know, the type with a reservoir tip in the end that are very hard to pop that are usually not filled up with helium or, you know, non-bodily liquids. Okay, that's enough of a description. You know what the hell I'm talking about, but this guy brought that. So another check on the board for him being super guilty. This guy is just doing all of the boxes here. He literally is fumbling the bag here, bro. Everything you're not supposed to do as a creep you have done, but thankfully you have done it because it's making this video so much more enjoyable for me. A lot of these guys have families. Uh, I got children from my previous marriage. I got three. You have three children. Yeah. And how old are they? 14, 13, and five. I got one boy. And as disgusting as it is, we have seen this many times in this show. These creeps often have families of their own, which is just, you know, it's scary implications there. I won't really get into that, but it's just disgusting that these people have access to children in their real life and they're out doing this in their free time. I'm not going to accuse any of them of, you know, other crimes, but it leads your mind to wonder here, like what could possibly be going on in these households? And it also just shows the power of this show. Thankfully, it's taking this guy off the street and making it known that he is a creep so that the rest of the world cannot be damaged by his actions. So if it's not okay for your 14 year old daughter why is it okay for you to do this with a girl i might have said what i said there but there was no intentions of it well, that doesn't make sense Oh man, and he just deflects from that major question that I was just bringing up that I'm so glad Chris asked. He simply just goes, you know what? Uh, I was just saying what I said on the internet. There was no intentions behind it, which I've said this a million times in my videos. I'm sure you guys are freaking tired of me saying this, but when you show up at the house, that shows your intentions, all right? And when you're requesting pictures and sending pictures yourself, that shows your intentions. I feel like I am talking to a wall with these guys, but it's just funny how they think any of this is going to fool people in the moment. This dude's just scrambling and the best things that he can come up with are things we've heard a thousand times before. You know, I swear in my own kids' life that I'm being straight up with you. Your own kids' life? Yeah, I love my kids dearly. I don't get to see them, but... <laughs> okay, so that's good at least. He says I don't get to see him, so he does not have custody. That clears up a little bit there, but how dare this guy say, yes, on my kid's life, bro. On my freaking kid's life, I would not I would not lie to you. Despite the fact that everything in this interview up until this point has been a major lie, this time I am not lying to you, all right? I had no intentions behind those chats, even though I showed up and was looking super excited before you walked out. Give me a freaking break, bro. Have you ever seen our stories on computer predators? Thomas, this is one of those stories, and I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC. And we're doing a story about adults meeting kids online. And if there's anything else you'd like to say, we'd like to hear it. Wow, and I mean, I'm no psychologist, I don't know how body language stuff works, but it's pretty clear here that this guy's heart rate is just bursting out of his chest at this point. This dude is about to have a heart attack. Do you see how hard he's breathing? And he's like crimping up on his hat, trying to reshape it out of stress. You could tell this guy is just realizing, you know, in a moment, just how drastically his life has changed. And it is a, a beautiful moment for us to see, but it's also just insane to think of going through that yourself, which obviously none of us would have been in his shoes, but still, that has gotta be an earth shattering feeling. And this guy doesn't even know really what to say at this point. So let's see if he says something slick before leaving to get arrested. We're prepared to have more than one guy show up at the same time. And, and it's happened since the very first investigation. Sometimes the police make an arrest and don't have time to take the guy away. So then when this guy gets arrested, he even has to be held at the house, just sitting there in cuffs, squirming, wondering what's happening. Probably could not call his wife or anything if they're still together. Sounds like they're divorced possibly. But yeah, this was one of those moments where they ended up catching another guy who I believe I've reacted to on the channel just moments after this guy got arrested. So sounds like he had a very bad time. But the Cowboy Predator is going down as one of the worst excuse makers I have seen on this show so far. And I want to know what you guys think. If you think that his lies were as egregiously bad as I was saying they were. I mean, they usually are with these guys, but this dude just had the playbook. But it says he was sentenced to 29 months in prison with three years of probation. Uh, again, these charges are not quite as firm as I would like, but also I'm no lawyer, so maybe he's gotten in trouble again in the future. All that I know is we took him off the streets and he now has to register as the monster that he is. So a happy ending in my book. Thank you, Chris, for saving the day. I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. Did you enjoy this one? I got plenty more on the way. Weekly content going up on my Patreon. You guys should definitely check it out. As I was saying earlier in the video, we have TCAP bingo happening this Friday. So if you want to be a part of that, make sure you sign up over there. Thank you so much to my supporters. You guys are absolutely amazing. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. Until next time, peace out.